is the first prompt. I also meant to say that I bought this go this ghost costume sweater thing, but you guys can't even see it because of the angle that I'm sitting at. But that's why I'm wearing this like weird white jumper. It's like a, it has like wings. I thought I would get in the spirit and wear like a little ghost onesie jumper thing for this video, but you guys can't even see that. So I'll be back with- I sit you down and you start to spin again. Why? Stop. <laughs> Okay, you, you were doing so good. You are doing so good. You were following all the rules. I thought maybe you'd had an exorcism where you were no longer possessed, but maybe you were just on your good behavior. What's up everyone? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Zach and in today's video, I am gonna be picking my October TVR. So if you haven't been here before, every September and October, I use this very cool haunted spin wheel from Target. Um, mine is about two years old and barely works. I think the older it gets and the longer I have it, the more like spirits inhabit it because it just goes off the chains and does all kinds of wild things all the time. Um, it's not making any sound right now. I'm honestly a little bit worried that it might be broken, but we're about to find out in this video. If you haven't been here before, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Subscribing to my channel helps me out a ton and a like on the video goes a long way. I would love to know in the comments, what are you reading for October? Are you participating in the readathon that I'm running in October? If you're just seeing this, it's not too late to sign up. You can sign up before October 1st and still be able to join the readathon. The announcement video for that is linked in the description box below. The theme of the readathon is basically Final Girls versus Killer which we're doing in September and so this is the revenge edition. So yeah basically all you need to know for this video there's not a whole lot of setup it's just there are like little words on this that say things like treats will be yours and prepare to be scared and I will spin the wheel and then whatever prompt I get I will pick a book and show you guys that. Uh, so yeah, I have been in kind of a reading slump, so I'm really looking forward to kind of trying to spice things up for this video. I'm also kind of looking for like a monthly reset here of like, I, I have some videos planned for the rest of the month, not very many. Um, and then in October, I'm, I'm hoping for like a fresh reset. I think at this point in the year, it's fall. I feel really good. Um, I love fall and I think it's time to just kind of reset energy and dive into some new books and I have I have video ideas so that feels very exciting I'm hoping that the spin wheel will cooperate with those ideas and let me pick some of the books that I want to but yeah without further ado I guess let's get into spin number one and it's not making any sound right now oh see it just does its own thing sometimes it doesn't stop but yeah oh All right, Screams Head It Your Way is the first prompt. I also meant to say that I bought this go this ghost costume sweater thing, but you guys can't even see it because of the angle that I'm sitting at. But that's why I'm wearing this like weird white jumper. It's like a, it has like wings. I thought I would get in the spirit and wear like a little ghost onesie jumper thing for this video, but you guys can't even see that. So I'll be back with uh, a prompt for Screams Head It Your Way which is, all right, Screams Headed Your Way is a hyped book and I am going to pick Jennifer L. Armantrout's new book, Fall of Ruin and Wrath. This is the Barnes and Noble edition. I think the regular cover is blue, so not too much of a difference. Oh, there's some end papers. Okay, yeah, whatever. I actually don't really know what this is about and I don't really want to know. I've never read a Jennifer L. Armantrout book. I do remember when I read the synopsis a long time ago, it still has this idea of like, a really pure woman, which I uh, mixed opinions about, but something about that being thrown into the chaos of like a war. I, I don't know, guys. Stay tuned because I want to review this book for a few reasons. One, I've never read a Jennifer L. Armantrout book. And two, I'm wondering if they're overhyped. And that's kind of what I want to figure out. Um, yeah, I do really like this cover, though. I like the crows or ravens. And I don't know. I remember when I read the synopsis, I was like, oh, this might actually be a Jennifer L. Armantrout book that I could like. I would read that synopsis to you guys now, but I think if I go in blind with no expectations, I'm going to have a better chance of liking the book. So let's do that. <laughs> um, it is smaller than her From Blood and Ash series, which is like 900 pages each a book. Not actually, but they're they're pretty big. I used to have the From, From Blood and Ash series, but I sold them because I was like, I'm realistically not going to read these at this point. And this one stands alone. Like you don't have to read anything about that. I don't think it takes place in the same world or anything. I could be wrong about that, but from the research I did, I know that you don't need to know anything about the From Blood and Nash series to enjoy this. So I'm hoping this one will end up being good. I don't plan on reading From Blood and Ash and I will let you guys know if I plan to continue this series or what I think about it. So stay tuned in the month of October. Okay. 
We're gonna do pick number two right now, and as soon as I grab it, it might start going. Oh, maybe not. Okay, yeah. here we go. Sometimes it just, oh. Okay. Okay, that, according to my prompt sheet, it looks exciting is a thriller. So I'm gonna go find a thriller and I'll be right back. All right, so the thriller that I'm gonna pick is everyone in my family has killed someone. Special thank you to Neve for sending me the UK cover of this because I absolutely love it. I don't know why, but this cover just does something for me. I, I love it. So I'm gonna pick this one, which I've actually started and got about 11% into a few months ago, and I really, really enjoyed it. It just wasn't the mood then, but I feel like it is a very fall mood kind of book. So basically, this is the story about a family who is stranded on a mountaintop resort because of a storm. It kind of has, and then there were none vibes. I really like the way that the back puts it. It says, everyone in my family is a killer. Everyone in my family is a suspect, but which of them is a murderer? So. Everything I've heard about this book is that it's really fun and satisfying, and that's the kind of thriller that I need after reading a bunch that I did not like. <laughs> I've taken a small break from thrillers after I did this big like exploration of thrillers, but I feel like this one is one that I really will like. I'm predicting it to be five stars, which hopefully I'm not going in with too high of expectations, but anything that resembles um, a whodunit, a like, stranded location, particularly a family that has, uh, although strangers being stranded together is a whole different kind of spice and fun. But this, I don't know, I, I have really high hopes for. And he, the author of this actually announced the sequel. The, the cover of that is also stunning in my opinion, in case you're wondering. That one seems to take place like on a train, which I'm like, give it to me, give it to me. That is like so like up my alley of like this close proximity being trapped somewhere and then trying to figure out who the killer is like i love those kind of murder mysteries so i have really high hopes for this and this author stay tuned and i'll let you guys know if it works out All right here we go spin number three this thing is doing really well today maybe it got like an exorcism and is no longer possessed it seems to be like following rules all right treats will be yours this is a free pick, so I get to pick whatever I want. Say less. I'll be right back. Okay, for this free space, I'm going to pick a book that I actually have on Ping and Random House Audio. By the time I actually read this, I might end up getting a hard copy of it because the audio is 22 hours long, which makes me think that it's a pretty big book. This book is called Black River Orchard by, by Chuck Wing Windig. And I've never read anything by this author, but I've heard really good things about him. And after having such a good experience with Dead 11, this book kind of reminds me of Dead 11. And I think I'm like on a search of that same level of a story. And maybe again, maybe the moral of the story is that my expectation of books have been too high and maybe that's what's caused the slump or just life has been a struggle the last month. But I don't know. I Books give me so much hope and freedom and creativity. That's a whole nother tangent. But yeah, I just wanted to take a moment to say that I'm very thankful for books and I'm thankful for you all in this community. Um, a lot of you have been around the last month. It's been a, it's been a tough month. Things are getting better. Um, life throws us things all the time and you know we recover from them and that is happening. But I do want to just take a second to say thank you to everyone who's just been around and talking about books and reading like that. It fills my bucket and it makes me really happy. So. All right, enough for the soapbox, or soapbox, that's not the right word. <laughs> soapbox is when you complain about something. Um, enough of the, I don't know, teddy bear behavior? <laughs> Whatever, anyways, you guys get the point. So Black River Orchard is a horror, and um, here's like a blurb of it. It says, a small town is transformed when seven strange trees begin bearing magical apples in this masterpiece of horror from best-selling author of Wanderers and the Book of Accidents. Essentially what happens is in this town, it starts bearing fruit, and when you eat this fruit, you start to get peculiar gifts. And um, it says, but when your appetite for the apples and the peculiar gifts keep growing, you you become darker. And I think it might be a commentary on addiction or I don't know, like obsession with magic. Um, and obviously there are gonna be some consequences of getting what you want, like there always are, is in horror books. And so for this book to be so long, I bet there's gonna be a lot of in-depth like character development and things as we go through these horrors. I can't decide if I want to do the audio or the physical. I think what I'm leaning towards is that I'll start it on audio and not buy the physical yet. And if I can get on with the audio okay, 
I will just listen to it on audio because if it ends up being a book I don't like, I'm really tired of selling books. And so maybe I could save some money by just listening to it on audio. Um, so I'm going to start it with audio. And then if I start to really, really love it, like I did for Dead 11, then I'll get a physical copy. But yeah, stay tuned for that because this is a book I've been looking forward to for a while, really since I read Dead 11, um, because it had already been announced. It just kind of gives me those similar vibes and yeah, I'm chasing other books like that. So stay tuned to find out if that actually works out or not. All right, let's go for spin number four. Here we go. This, I'm really impressed that this thing is doing what it's supposed to. Watch your back. All right, let's see. Oh boy. Okay. Well, that's just great. Watch Your Back is a long-term TBR. Um, so I'm going to go find a book that's been on my TBR for a long time and I'll be back. <laughs> okay. This one actually worked out working well because I've been saving this book until the release of this author's next book in October because I want to do a video where I read them both. And so that is Spells for Forgetting. So this is the story about a girl whose best friend is murdered and her like the love of her life is accused of that murder or somebody that she's been really interested in. I don't know if it's actually her boyfriend. Yeah, it says the love of her life. Wow, I got that phrasing correct. Okay, um, yeah, there's a tight-knit community that's steeped in folklore and tradition ruled by the seasons and ancient superstitions. Like, why is it taking me so long to read this? But I think this is a like magical realism, fantasy, murder mystery kind of book. And I tried to read this author's YA book and I could just could never get into it. The, I think it's called Fable, at least that one in particular. But this, everybody says that I will like this book. Again, with the expectation thing. <laughs> but everybody says that I will like this book. So I'm really holding out hope that I will. This is a perfect time for it. It's a perfect fall read, I feel, just given what it's about. And with the next one coming out, it's not it's not a series, but the cover is very similar. Um, I guess it's just like how authors do those similar covers. So you recognize it as their books and their stories. But I love the cover of the next one. I have it pre-ordered. This is actually, I think, the Fairy Loot Edition. Yeah, the Fairy Loot Edition. I would love to have the next one in Fairy Loot or the the author's next book in fairy loot, but I'm not super pressed about that. I have the regular one pre-ordered, but yeah, I hope to do a video where I read them both because I have been so excited for this and it feels like the perfect fall story. Um, and yeah, everybody says that I like this. So let's hope and we'll see as the month goes on in October. Spin number five, here we go. Uh oh, we've been doing so good. Are you going to not stop this time? Okay, so sometimes I have to stop it myself. So I'm just going to close my eyes and hit the button. All right, we got happy times ahead. Okay, if I sit you down and you start to spin again, why? Stop. Okay, you, you were doing so good. You're doing so good. You're following all the rules. I thought maybe you'd had an exorcism where you were no longer possessed, but maybe you were just on your good behavior. Okay, um, let's see. What did I get? Happy times ahead? Yeah, happy times ahead. That's what I got. That is a romance book. Okay, cool. I'm going to go get a romance. I'll be right back. All right, for a romance book, I picked You Again, which I've heard is like a retelling of a movie called When Sally Met Harry or Harry Met Sally or something like that. I've never seen that movie, though. That is another example of a movie that people say that I will like. So I thought rather than ruining my expectations of this book, that I would maybe watch that movie after I read this book, because apparently people say, like, if you love that movie, like, this is just a direct retelling of that. So yeah, I want to read the book first. Essentially, what I know about this story is that these two people were once dating the same girl. So there are some queer elements to it, which is cool. And then they, I think they end up living together. Um, I don't know. They end up sleeping with the same woman. Their paths cross again later. Um, so they call themselves friends without benefits. We'll see where this goes. I feel like it's setting up to be a really cozy, good banter kind of story rom-com, you know, all the things that I really love in romance. I've never read anything by this author. So yeah, I'm just really looking forward to this one. It's one that I had been anticipating since like the beginning of the year to come out, to be honest with you. So yeah, I'm very, very excited to read this in October. I mean, if nothing it screams fall vibes, this does. Like, look at this. All right, as soon as I touch this thing, it's gonna start spinning. Here we go. Oh, really? 
Are you gotta be kidding me? Whatever. Here we go. Boom, 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 boom. You don't want to know. You don't want to know. Okay. This would have been helpful before I picked Spells for Forgetting. You Don't Want to Know is a book that's been recommended to me, which Spells for Forgetting has been re recommended to me. So if only I had the powers of prophecy, um, I would not be in this position, but oh, be quiet. There are plenty of books that people recommend to me. Let me go find one of those books. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I'm cheating on this one a little bit. So for this one, I'm gonna pick Starling House by Alex, Alex E. Harrow, which, um, comes out on October 3rd. I have this book planned for something else and I wanted to squeeze it in. And um, this is the author of 10,000 Doors of January. And that book has been recommended to me over and over and over again. So I am kind of cheating here and I will acknowledge that. And I'm not stretching too far, okay? So this book is basically about, I'll just read you guys what it says because the synopsis is really short and it sounds very interesting. I dream sometimes about a house I've never seen. Opal is a lot of things, orphan high school dropout, full-time cynic and part-time cashier, but above all, she's determined to find a better life for her younger brother, Jasper. One that gets them out of Eden, Kentucky, a town remarkable for only two things, bad luck and E. Starling, the reclusive 19th century author of The Underland who disappeared over a hundred years ago. All she left behind were dark rumors and her home. Everyone agrees that it's best to ignore the uncanny mansion and its mazentropic? Air author. Almost everyone, anyway. I should be scared, but in the dream, I don't hesitate. Opal has been obsessed with the Underland since she was a child. When she gets the chance to step inside Starling House and make some extra cash for her brother's escape fund, she can't resist. But sinister forces are digging deeper into the buried secrets of Starling House, and author's own nightmares have become far too real. As Eden itself seems to be drowning in its own ghost, Opal realizes that she might finally have found a reason to stick around. In my dream, I'm home, and now she'll have to fight. Welcome to Starling House. Enter if you dare. Like, if that does not scream a book that I want to read, I don't know what does. It also reminds me of Gallant, which those of you who have been here before know how much I love that book. It reminds me of like an adult version of that. So I'm hoping that it'll have similar vibes and storytelling. I mean, at its core, they're both gothic stories. So I think that maybe is something that I really have discovered that I love. So we'll see. I'm not going to compare the two because expectations, but yeah. We'll find out. I'm very much looking forward to that book, though. It'll be my first by that author. And then maybe one day I'll get to the one that was actually recommended to me, 10,000 Doors of January. All right, our next spin. Here we go. Come on, give me something good. Give me something good. Give me something good. Oh, prepare to be scared. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Prepare to be scared. I believe that's a horror. It is. Okay. Okay. If only I had prophesied that, I could have used Black River Orchard, but it's fine. We have plenty of horror stories that we can find. Okay. I also have a great pick for this, which is My Darling Girl by Jennifer Mc McMahon. I'm not actually sure how to pronounce her last name, but she is the author of The Drowning Kind, which I loved this book. And then she's also the author of many more books, but as relevant to me in this channel, I also read The Children on the Hill, which I enjoyed, but not nearly as much as I loved um, The Drowning Kind. So this is her new book that's coming out October 3rd, same day as Starling House. And this is the story about a girl who goes to help take care of her estranged mother, who has been diagnosed with cancer and is dying, I believe. And when she gets there in this remote house in Vermont, because most of Jennifer's stories take place in Vermont, which is somewhere I would love to live, that's probably an element of her books that I love. Uh, once she gets to the house, like weird things start to happen. And that's really all you're given up front. Uh, also, this book takes place around Christmas. So hopefully, you know, that doesn't throw me for too much of a loop reading that in October, but we'll see. I'm definitely looking forward to it because I've enjoyed her other books, even The Children on the Hill, which I didn't enjoy as much as The Drowning Kind. Like The Drowning Kind, I absolutely loved. I, I very much recommend it. Um, if you have never read this author or you're looking for a spooky book, this, this is really good in my opinion. It tackles mental mental health, um, it tackles loss, it tackles family dynamics, and it's just really spooky and creepy and, and unique. I've never read a story quite like this one. I really loved it. 
So yeah, I'm hoping that My Darling Girl will be very good. I don't think based off the synopsis that it will beat um, the drowning kind, but we will find out. I, 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 I would be very surprised if it did. So that would be a, a pleasant surprise, but I do expect to at least enjoy it. I've pre-ordered it on Audible because I feel like it'll be a good audio book and I just am running out of space for physical books right now and it didn't meet the mark of being pre-ordered on physical. So it will be coming via audio credit. Treats will be yours. I've covered up my prompt sheet with books, so that's good. Um, a free space. Okay. Okay. All right. For this free space, I have picked the Carnival of Curiosities. Sometimes I get stuck on the word carnival and I'm like, does it say car carnival? Car Anyways, the Carnival of Curiosities. And um, yeah, I don't have a lot to say about this, except the synopsis of this is very confusing, but the atmosphere and vibes and storytelling seems to be something that I will enjoy. It is a bit out of my comfort zone. Um, it is, it see, uh, what I can grasp from the synopsis is that there's this group of people who are participating in this carnival and then some really sinister and wild things start to happen between them and at the carnival. And then I think like somebody's like trying to kill them. It just seems like it's all over the place. And the reviews of this have not been great, which makes me a little bit nervous. But one thing I'm trying to do more and more is not judge books by reviews because my taste is not the same as other people's and oftentimes it turns out to be that like books that I really love have relatively low if or what I would consider low taste and then I would read books that have like a 4.5 rating and I despise it so I'm trying not to pay as much attention to that and just go for things where the synopsis sounds good this also takes place in Victorian London and that I'm, I'm just hoping to like I what I want to get out of this book is like great atmosphere and character development I've heard it's very slow pace, and so I'm fine with that these days, which is crazy because a few years ago when I first started BookTube, I could not read any slow pace books at all, but slow pace seems to be my jam recently. So I'm very much looking forward to this. I'll definitely let you guys know what I think about it. Yeah, hopefully it'll be one of those ones that I, I took a risk on and really enjoyed. All right, here we go. Ooh, happy times ahead. Okay. Happy times are ahead. So I get to pick another romance. No complaints about that. This TBR seems to be made up of spooky books and romance books. But you know what? For fall, I'm... What else? What else could there be? All right. For this one, I have picked Witches Get Stuff Done. This is a new release paranormal romance novel. This is the story about a girl who comes to take care of her late aunt's house, which has a butler and live-in ghosts and all things fall and witchy and paranormal and fun. And so, yeah, she comes to take care of the house. And then the guy is the head librarian at the town. The town's called Starfill, it, Starfall. It also seems to have like some small town vibes. Oh, I've been craving that so much. And he's the head librarian and he really wants to get inside this house that she's come to take care of. And so he tries to form a relationship with her so that he can learn more about the house. Outsiders in the community haven't been allowed into this house. So he, as a librarian, wants to study it and see like what all the spookiness and mysteriousness are around this house. And meanwhile, they end up spending more time together. And there we go. We have a romance novel. All right, last spin, here we go. I was gonna say give me something good, but I feel like I've gotten really good things out of this. I'm I'm not not complaining. Um, okay, I might have to stop it myself. That's okay, I feel like the spin was done pretty good this time. Close my eyes. Happy I just got that one. Let's respin. <laughs> I'm making up the rules as I go. I I I wanna get a new prompt. Let's go. Okay, I'm gonna have to stop it. Oh! Okay. I do believe that's a horror because I've gotten this one a hundred times already. Oh no, Screams Headed Your Way is a hyped book. Man, I, f I, I hope I haven't gotten these prompts confused. 
I don't think I have, but if I have, it doesn't matter. It's fine. Okay. A hyped book. Let me go find a hyped book. I'll be right back. Okay. Don't kill me. <laughs> don't kill me. For hyped book, let's play a game called how many times can this book be on a TBR before it actually gets read? The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I'm not going to say a lot about this because it's been on like every TBR I've had since I started BookTube. So maybe this will actually be the month. Don't hold me to such expectations. I really need to read this book. Like, and I really want to. I think I have such high expectations, just sticking with the theme here, that I'm like kind of afraid to read it. But it, it really needs to happen. Like there's no, there's no excuse at this point, guys. There's no excuse. <laughs> All right. Those are the books that I'm hoping to read in October, along with lots of video ideas that I have that I'm going to try to squeeze these books into, and some other ones that you all don't know about that I'm hoping to read in the month of October. I want to say a very special thank you to you for clicking on this video, and thank you to the Mostly Ghostly crew who support my channel every month through the channel membership. Together, they get to vote on content. We read a book together every other month. There's a separate section in the Discord for talking about life and hanging out, and then we have Discord hangouts every month where we get together on a chat and are our call and talk about life and books and all things mostly ghostly related. So thank you so much again for clicking on this video. I would love to know what you guys are reading in the month of October. It's one of the best months, if not the best month of the year. I hope you all are enjoying your fall and getting some cozy times in and reading some great books. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Say it, kill.